Our devotion today comes from the 15th chapter of Luke. It's called the parable of the prodigal son. However, when you read the uh, story, you'll find eight references to the father. So it could just as easily be called the loving father as well as the prodigal son. To begin, I'd like to share a little bit of a song uh, sung by George Strait, country western artist. It's called Love Without End, Amen. I got sent home from school one day with the shiner on my eye. Fighting was against the rules, and it didn't matter why. When Dad got home, I told that story just like I'd rehearsed, and then stood there on those trembling knees and waiting for the worst. And he said, let me tell you a secret about a father's love, a secret that my daddy said was just between us. He said, daddies don't love their children just every now and then. It's a love without end. Amen. When I became a father in the spring of 81, there was no doubt that stubborn boy was just like my father's son. And when I thought my patience had been tested to the end, I took my daddy's secret and I passed it on to him. I said, son, I want to share a secret. My father shared with me. You see, fathers don't love their children just every now and then. No, a father's love is without end. Amen. Then he dreamt one night he had died and he was in front of the pearly gates. And he knew that was a mistake. If they had only known half of what he had done, they wouldn't let him in. But then he heard this voice from across the gate. I want to share a secret. My father shared with me. You see, fathers don't love their children just every now and then. But a father's love is without end. Amen. Talked about the relationship of unconditional love that a father has with his son. And that is the story about the prodigal son. You have two sons. And the youngest son said, Father, I'd like my inheritance. And the father gave it to him. And then he went and spent it on self-indulgence. He was a hedonist. He did everything for himself. And then like a fool and his money, they soon are parted. He ended up destitute, ended up working in a hog farm, dealing with the hogs. He didn't have a lot of money, didn't have food, so he was eating hog food. Finally, he came to the epiphany, this is stupid. I, I've got an opportunity, I could go home. But I, I need to rehearse what I'm going to tell my father. But I'm going to tell my father, I sinned against heaven, I've sinned against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called a son. No, all I want to do is to be a servant because they eat better food than what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go to my father with a repentant heart. And so he goes to his father, and when his father sees him at a distance, he runs to him. He's eager to re receive his prodigal son. And when he comes, he hugs him, and he gives him a great big old bear hug, and he continues to kiss him. And then he said, get a robe. Get the robe that identifies the family and give him the robe, put him on it, and then get a signet ring. Put the ring on to give him the authority of a family, and he doesn't have any shoes. Only servants are without shoes. You get him a pair of sandals. And so after he gets all that, he says, get a fatted calf and kill him because we're going to have a Jesus party. And there's no party like a Jesus party, as we all know, that the father was eager to receive him. And this is what's interesting about God. God is love. That who God is. We know in Romans 5, 8, that while we were yet sinners, God loved us. Can you imagine that? Uh, we love in a human way because we love people because they're pretty. We, we love others because of their personality. They have charisma. Uh, we like people for the power, the prestige. But Jesus is saying, I, I look at all men. It, it, it's it's my desire is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would come would be received. And so while we were yet sinners, just like this prodigal son, God loved us. So let me ask you today, where are you? Are you lost in a foreign land? Are you ready to come back home? If so, this is a perfect day to do that because God is eager to receive you because there are times when we all have unrepentant sins, addictions that we're addicted to, things we need to drop and get right with God. This is the day to do that because here's what God is telling you. I'm going to give you a robe of righteousness, not your righteousness, but imputed to us because of the blood shed on the cross. 
Jesus Christ's righteousness is imputed to me. So like the son, I'm given a robe, but a robe of righteousness. I'm not given a signet ring to identify authority. I'm given something better. Christ has given me through Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit then empowers me to resist sin. As James tells us, resist the devil and he'll flee. Well, how can I do that? I can do it because of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit resides with me, I have all those gifts. And then because I am a servant, I'm a slave to sin, Christ says, no, here's the deal. You are no longer a servant. You are a son. You are adopted into the family of God. So Romans chapter 8 says, hey, look, I'm adopted into the family. I, and so I serve the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. And if he's the king and I'm his son, I'm a prince. And I need to operate and act like that. That I'm a child of God. I'm adopted into the family of God. And the wedding feast is about to begin. God is eager. Eager for us to hug us and to love us because that's who God is. God is love. And I like to conclude with the secret my father shared with me. You see, fathers don't love their children just every now and then. No, a father's love is without end. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you with repentant hearts. We just thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift that you have given us on the cross, for the blood that was shed to atone for our sins. And while we were yet sinners, you loved us, Lord Jesus, and we just praise you for that. We just thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the empowerment to become men of hope, Lord, uh, to be worthy, to be, understand the role that we have as princes, uh, to operate in the faith, and to live out you know, what you have asked us to do. And we just want to tell you, Lord Jesus, how thankful we are. And we just praise you and we give you all the glory in Jesus' holy name. And everyone said, Amen.